I'm now going to take the jump because I mentioned I was going to talk about how I became spiritual. And I'm going to talk about cells. I'm going to talk about two identical cells. I chose liver, but it could be muscle, bone, brain, skin. But I wanted two identical types of cells. But this cell belongs to Bruce. Bruce? And that's your cell, Margaret's cell. No two people are the same. And I say that for a simple reason. If I take my cells and put them into your body, your immune system will say not self and destroy the cells. And if I take your cells and put it into my body, my immune cells will say not self and destroy the foreign cells. So cells have identity. And I say, where is the identity that makes one person different than another person? That's why I chose two identical cells, because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the color from everything that's the same between the two cells. So where the color is left over is where two cells are different from each other. Magic. Yeah. Where's the difference between two people? On the surface of the cells are receptors, like I showed on the switches yesterday, and receptors are antennas, and that the antennas on my cell receive a different signal than the antennas on Margaret's cells. But where are the antennas located? On the outside of the cell. So where do you think the signal comes that activates the antennas from the field? Let me give you the name. The medicine studies a small group of these receptors so they can match tissue when they want to do transplants. And medicine calls them self receptors. What do receivers, which, what does this receptor receive? Self, the a same. signal. And the signal is from the outside. Now, if I take off my self receptors, I have no identity on the cell. I can take this cell and implant it to anybody and it will not be rejected. It's a liver cell, not anybody special liver cell. But if I take Margaret's receptors from her cell and put it on my cell, whose cell is this? Margaret's, yes, because if I put this back into my body, I reject it. But if I put my cell with her receptors in her body, it's accepted. I transfer ownership by transferring the antennas. Now, I want you to pretend that the membrane, the, 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 the membrane of the cell is opaque. No light can get in. If I put the cells in white light. What color will be in here? Nothing. So I put it in white. It's dark. But now I want you to pretend that the self-receptors are like sunglasses. So what color is going to come into my cell? Green? What color? Green. And what color comes into Margaret's cell? Orange. Right. Okay, now the most important question. Where did the color come from? From the outside. And now what is the outside? All that is. And why is it important? Because... The, if my only lets in green and Margaret lets in red, my green came from where? The white light. Where'd the red come from? Come. White light. The spirit is a piece of the whole that comes into you separate from the other person who gets a different piece. Okay, now here's an interesting question. If I kill the cell, did the green frequency disappear from the white light? No. What's Nine. the point? The identity came from outside. If the body dies, the identity is still outside. But in a future, if a future embryo comes with the same self-receptors, what broadcast does it read? The same broadcast that provided for this one. You don't die because you're not inside yourself. You're part of the whole thing. And therefore, you're a part of this. You can never be separated from this because you are a segment of that. And when I understood this, I realized I was immortal in my identity because the identity and the cells are not the same. And by this guy, I, I got very excited because I didn't believe in this stuff, but 
the science was very clear that the signal came from the outside that made differences between people. And so at that time, maybe I had too much time on my hands. I asked my cells, if I'm already out here, why do I need this? And my cells gave me the answer. My cells said, if you're just a spirit, what does chocolate taste like? If you're just a spirit, what does a sunset look like? If you're just a spirit, what does being in love feel like? And the reason is the cells convert the experiences of the world into sensation, which turns into electrical activity of the brain, which connects to our source. So the most important thing I learned at that moment was this place is for us to sense and taste and smell and touch and experience and love and live this planet while we can. And what happens when we live in fear? We shut everything down and the life is wasted. And the point about this is each person is like a frequency of the light in <laughs> refraction. What's white that, light, you know? when the white light comes in, the spectrum comes out. If I push the spectrum in this way, what comes out the other side? White light. But each one of us is like a frequency. So we vote in this room, we don't like Mr. X. And we throw X, we throw Mr. X out. Okay, so we throw out Mr. X. I take the remaining frequencies and I push them back through the prism. Do I get white light? No. We, as a group, want the white light to come back to the planet. We gave the white light to people like Jesus and Buddha and Mohammed, but they were trying to teach us a lesson that we are the white light. The lesson we did not learn is that we ourselves in a larger thing called humanity. We as individuals are not evolving. Humanity as a collective organization is evolving. So we have to recognize each human is a piece of all that is, and all of us together make white light. And so we are in a state in the world where we keep killing off the cells, and it's not a coincidence that as we destroy the body of humanity, that humans are suffering from what are called autoimmune disease, self-destruction for the vibrations that affect the whole also create the same pattern in us. Okay, so um, the mind, let's talk about it now. That there's a super consciousness, something from the environment that plays through the self receptors. There's a subconsciousness, which is our experiences and our instincts. Most people live their day to day life just using this. But if you take the super consciousness and mix it with the subconsciousness together, that's what self consciousness is all about. That's when you use your conscious mind and your experiences and create the life that you want, which may be different than the programming in the subconscious. And the difference between these is the uh, super consciousness is intuitive. When you're having thoughts, they're really out in the field is where you pick up your information from. The subconscious is the autopilot. You, it will drive the car if you're not paying attention. And as we found out, 95% or more of the day we operate with this. But when you take that one and this one together, then you're driving your own vehicle. So in conclusion, I say, well, what creates the life that we have? And the answer is spirit the element from the field and then the influence of the of the spirit in the self is the mental process yes. so the reality that we're experiencing right now is a combination of spiritual and mental activity the article is called the mental universe and it's from a professor of physics at a major university called Johns Hopkins University, university. instead of reading the whole article I'll show you the exact two sentences at the very end of the paper the universe is immaterial, it's mental and spiritual, live and enjoy. And this ties together all the work that Greg has been talking about in the field, the mentation, the spiritual element, it ties it to the physical body and your own consciousness. And therefore, 
we have a good message from science. We can create the world that we want, and what we have to do is become conscious. And then heaven will be on this planet right here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.